Maniac McGee by Jerry Spinelli Chapter 23 Grayson got the crimpets all right. He bought a whole box of three packs. With ten packs to a box, that was thirty butterscotch crimpets. Maniac thought, he must have climbed out of that buffalo pen right into heaven. Then Grayson took Maniac home. Home for the old man was the Two Mills YMCA. He lived in a room on the third floor, but he didn't take Maniac up there. He took him downstairs to the locker room. He got him a towel and a cake of soap, told him to take off his rags, and pointed the way to the showers. Maniac stayed in the shower for an hour. He hadn't done this since his last bath with the little ones. He smiled at the thought of them shrieking and splashing. The shower needles stung his scratches, but it was a good welcome back to town stinging. When Maniac finally forced himself from the shower, he found the old man waiting with clothes. Grayson's clothes. I'll call the U.S. Army in to haul them buffalo rags away, he said. They come in with gas masks on, and they used tongs to pick them up and put them in a steel box, and they took the box away to bury it at the bottom of the first mine shaft to come to. Maniac couldn't stop laughing. Neither could Grayson, especially when he got a load of the kid drowning in his clothes. An hour later, after a minor shopping spree, Maniac had clothes of his own. For the rest of the afternoon, they cruised around town talking and eating crimpets. So, said the old man, now what are you going to do? Maniac thought it over. How about a job? I could work for the park like you. Grayson didn't answer that. He said, where do you think you're going to stay? Maniac's answer was prompt. The baseball room. It's perfect. The tiny idea was beginning to worm its way into Grayson's head. He could barely feel it as it brushed by all the claptrap in his brain. He ignored it. He said, What about school? The maniac was silent. Some butterscotch icing had stayed behind on a wrapper. He scooped it up and mopped it from his finger, wishing it were Mrs. Beale's and not his own. Grayson who was not comfortable asking questions, was even less comfortable waiting for answers. I said, what about school? Maniac turned to him. What about it? You gotta go. You're a kid, ain't ya? I'm not going. But you gotta, don't ya? They'll make ya. Not if they don't find me. And the old man just looked at him for a while with a mixture of puzzlement and recognition as though the fish he had landed might be the same one he had thrown away long before. Why? he said. Maniac felt why more than he knew why. It had to do with homes and families and schools, and how a school seemed sort of like a big home, but only a day home, because then it empties out and you can't stay there at night because it's not really a home. And you could never use it as your address, because an address is where you stay at night. Where you walk right in the front door, without knocking, where everybody talks to each other and uses the same toaster. So all the other kids would be heading for their homes, their night homes, each of them, hundreds, flocking from school, like birds from a tree, scattering across town, each breaking off to his or her own place, each knowing exactly where to land, school, home. No, he was not going to have one without the other. If you try to make me, he said, I'll just start running. Grayson said nothing. What the kid said actually made him feel good, though he had no idea why and the brushing little worm of a notion was beginning to tickle him now. He kept on driving.